VR Sketch. This is SketchUp in VR. What's up? I'm Jonathan and welcome to Maker Tales, where I'm sharing my maker journey to help you go further in yours. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell icon to never miss an opportunity to keep making. This video is all about putting VR Sketch, a SketchUp extension, through its paces to see if it passes my VR precision modeling tests. Welcome to VR Sketch. VR Sketch is an extension for SketchUp. So yes, SketchUp is a paid program, and so is VR Sketch is a paid extension. They both have free trials, so if you like what you're seeing here, you can go ahead and give both those free trials a go and see if this is for you. So this is all within part of the VR precision modeling series, as I find the one thing within VR modeling is precision has gone out the window, and I really don't see why we can't have real millimeter or micrometer precision within VR. And I have to say that right this minute from the recording of this, I really do think from everything that I know and that I've explored, and that's quite a bit of VR modeling, that VR sketch is by far, so far, hitting the nail on the head. I'm amazed that VR sketch has flown right under the radar for me. And I think that's mainly because I haven't ever used SketchUp, as SketchUp isn't quite gelling for me, as I usually use Rhino, Fusion 360, or even Blender. So let's go in and do the three tests. If you're wondering what space I'm in, this is the warehouse that comes with VR Sketch. As soon as I increase the scale, it's going to disappear. So this is the normal modeling environment right here, nice and clear and spacious. So the three tests that we're going to be doing to show you how the precision modeling goes is a bit like my original VR series, which is we're going to be doing a 10 by 10 by 10 millimeter cube. Then we'll be creating a simple copy table or workbench or some sort of table shape. And then after that, we will be creating an entire laser cut, so to speak, phone stand, which is going to be interlocking like this, so to speak. And if we can do that all in VR, that means we've gone ahead and designed an entire product within virtual reality. So let's go ahead and let me just show you how the menus work here. You hold down the trackpad and here is your menu. I have to say it's one of the most intuitive menus I've used as of yet. And it has everything from selection, erasing, lines. You can see the text there. And it's quite easy from never using SketchUp before. I learned this in a about half an hour, and I have to say it's by far the easiest learning curve I've ever experienced. I'm going to use the grip buttons to bring up the world view up to here. And now using this rectangle tool, let's go ahead and do just 10 millimeters by 10 millimeters. I can scale the world while I'm actually doing operations, which I find is amazing. And instead of having this a little bit free floating, you can actually click the numbers here. I can just put in 10 millimeters. That's that one defined. And I'll go ahead and click on this one here, put in 10 millimeters, and there we go. Now all I have to do is let go, and that is a 10 by 10. And now let's go ahead, extrude, extrude this up. I'm going to click there, put in 10, and done. That's a 10 by 10 millimeter cube. I cannot believe how easy this has been compared to other VR modeling programs. So let's go ahead and do the next one. So one thing that you need to learn about SketchUp is what you have to do now is select this object, use the menu button, and make it a component. If not, it's like you're working within the same object when you start creating more things. And then if you want to see your components, you use the menu button, go, oh wait, that's because I've got that one selected. Open here, just make sure I'm going to the right one. Here, components, and right here will be your component list. So if I wanted to make more of those cubes, it would literally just be a case of drag dropping those cubes in. And there's much more to explore here, but this is just very top level review, so to speak, 
just to see that if there is such thing as precision modeling, which I am absolutely stunned by. So let's go ahead and let's just select these here. And then I'm gonna go ahead into eraser and delete those. So let's get on with the table test. So I'm gonna go use this square one here. I'm gonna drag this out. I think this is going to be 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, and then we'll go for a height. Um, I'm gonna go for a sitting down desk. So let's see, that's about there-ish. We're gonna go for a height of, what am I aiming for? About 73s usually, or 72, because there's gonna be a tabletop on that. So let's go 720. Fantastic. So that's one leg done. So now what I'm going to go ahead and do, let's go and select this, unselect that. Let's make that a component. Oh, look, I didn't bring this all the way down. So let's go ahead. Let's go push, pull. Actually, no, just move. And what we'll do is we'll move this down to here and make sure that we've got a good measurement of what this is supposed to be. So this is, okay, it is. That's good, it's still 720. Brilliant, so that's in place there. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this across. So let's go with the move here. I'm gonna move you from this point here. We're gonna move one copy of you. And let's go for a six. Look, you can also lock the axis here, so you can still move this. So you can unlock and lock the axis once you find one that you like. And let's move this to, um, let's say 650. 650, fantastic. That's those two there. Let's select them now, because I'm gonna do the exact same, but we're gonna go 120 in this direction. Actually, no, not 120, let's go for just one meter. So it's, it's, it's a small desk, or maybe we should go. Let's go give it 20 more, 20 more. There we go, 20 more centimeters. So that's the legs in place. Let's go ahead and add the skirt to it. So as these are all components, I can just go ahead and start creating this next one. And I'm going, this one's going to be 20 millimeters. Oh, that's the wrong one. So set you, I'm gonna go for 10. And set you to 20. Yes, that's what I'm wanting. And now I'm gonna use my move tool and move this line, so this face here. Ah, see, I was within that object, was I? Yeah, so I'm still learning this as I've never used SketchUp before. But here we go, rectangle tool. I'm gonna add this 100 by 20. Use the move tool. We're gonna move. Undo that move. So here, we're saying this edge, move by 10. Just want to double check that that's not. There, it isn't, that's good. It's not the same object. So let's go ahead and now let's pull that out from there to that surface here. Fantastic. And let's just quickly select this whole thing here. So that should, is it this way around? No, it's that way around. And then I deselect those. Now I go ahead and make that a component. So we'll copy that across in a moment. Let's just go ahead and do the same here now. 
So going here, we're going 20 by 10. And we're going to go with the Move tool. Oops. Let's undo that. Let's select that whole face for now. And there we go. So we can move to the center there. Let's go ahead and extrude that out to our other side. Fantastic. Scale that in a little bit and do our selection of that. Oh, I always do it wrong. I want to make sure that I'm doing it properly. There we go. That's how you select it properly. Let's make that a component. And now let's just quickly copy that across. So I'm going to go use the move tool. Scale it up a bit, get right in the middle of it from there, moving that one copy to there. This is so intuitive. I am actually just letting myself get lost in the making process, which I have to say is by far the first time I've ever had that in VR Precision. Usually it's just a headache wondering how on earth am I going to make this? So there we go, something nice and simple. Let's go ahead and let's add another support there and there and across there, because if not, this would not be a very sturdy table. So let's go and do that. So I'm just going to copy these down. Actually, I'll be able to copy all of them down. So let's go from there. We're going to copy you downwards. This axis, I want to lock it, and I want you to go, I'm not going to go by eye here, I want to actually put in a number, so, oh, yeah, 500 is what I'm wanting, 500, 500, fantastic, so there we go, we've got our desk coming together there, now let's just do this top part, so we're going to go and rectangle tool from that corner, to this corner, fantastic. And now I'm actually going to go ahead and try an offset of this edge. Never done this before. And I'm gonna offset this edge by, I think 40 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 25. Let's go 25 because we can. 25 millimeters, fantastic. And now I'm going to go ahead and use the eraser and erase this unneeded, is it this entire face? No, that's not what I'm wanting. I'm wanting this edge. So I can just go to all the lines here, just say goodbye line, goodbye line, goodbye line. And there we go. Now let's just extrude this up. Let's say this is 20 millimeter ply or something. And here we have a desk modeled that quickly. I am amazed. And if you really wanted to, you can now go ahead, obviously save this, but you can go ahead and add some materials. Go here in the drop down. Let's go for wood. Let's make this a. Uh, there we go, plywood with knots. <laughs> Let's go, I don't know what material, what material, should we go for wood veneer? Wood veneer, this one here, this looks like your standard. There we go, some wood veneer going on. Chuck that on the bottom. Let's say the whole edge was veneered. Let's just go a little bit bigger, say that edge, that edge, bring this round this edge here, and let's say that the rest was, I don't know, some sort of plywood, why not? This is by far the easiest I have ever, oh wow, that looks ugly. <laughs> really bad colors. Let's go for something more stylized then, because I am not a fan of how horrible that came out. So let's go Let's make this more stylized in the sense of, let's go for an ice blue top. Yeah, ice blue top and do, 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 do. gray legs. There we go, gray legs, ice blue. Let's 
I know that already looks so much better than that horrible default material that I had set on it. So that there is our table. And now let's go ahead and do our other full on precision model of a phone stand. So phone stand wise, I'm just going to go ahead and put this behind me, I think. Or I might just select it all and then say hide. I think that's probably going to be the best. So select that all. And then we're going to go here, hide selection. So that is now out, out the way. So phone stand, I think I remember all the dimensions. So let's see if I can get this off the bat. If not, it's just relative. It's more to see if the whole process could happen here. So let's go ahead. Let's go for a rectangle. This is going to be 80 by 175. And lock that to there. Brilliant. I'm now going to extrude this out. Actually, no, I'm not going to extrude this out because the way that the workflow within SketchUp is, I need to add the bevels first, I think. I'll do both. So let's go bevels afterwards, then we'll do bevels first time on the next part. So there's a three millimeter bit of wood. So let's see, how do we go about? I'm wanting a five millimeter bevel on all of my corners. And there is no beveling tool within SketchUp, so to speak. But what I have seen is that what you have to do is basically go for this two point arc. I then go along this here to a point that I like, but to get that point, I gotta use the measure tool. I'm gonna to measure and I'm gonna put in my five millimeters. Let's zoom in a little bit. Five millimeters. Uh, can I not? Just, okay, there's exactly five. So five millimeters there. So that point is there. You might not see any representation, but it is there. So let's do the same on this side, exactly five millimeters. And now let's get our pencil tool. And where is our point? There it is, five. So there, oops, I've used the wrong pencil tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Let's go ahead, two point pencil tool from this point to that point to there. And then from here, I use my push pull and I push that all the way through, was it? Or do I just delete it? I think I just delete it. Is that how this works? You can tell I've never used SketchUp before, so trying to understand this is new for me. All right, so there's a problem there. I really do think it is the push-pull, but I have to just go down to there. Yeah, there we go. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so it's a little bit of work to do fillets, but help. They they let you do it, and it's a lot more than what I can say from other modeling programs. So I'm just trying to think what's going to be the quickest way here. Um, let's go ahead and just go from, let's get here, draw a line from here straight across to there. So at least we already have a reference point. Draw a line, two-point line from here to there to there. Oops, that's probably should just zoom in because that's gonna make my life so much easier. There it is, there it is. Extrude that downwards so it locks there, fantastic. Then I can erase this guideline that I just set. Let's put in two more guidelines now. 
I'll get rid of this one, turn this into the extrusion. Let's pop that line from here. I'm sure those of you that know SketchUp are laughing at the way that I'm doing this, but keep in mind that I've never used SketchUp before, so, oh dear. So this is just what I've just seen in the meantime. So this goes to there, fantastic. Oops, once again, screwing and making a mess of this. Just delete those lines, go into our two-point line. This is going so fast. I did something like this in Gravity Sketch, and I'm not exaggerating. It took me more than half an hour to, or almost an hour to do the whole project. So to think that I actually think I'll have this done in relatively fast amount of time is actually amazing to me. So let's go ahead and erase these lines here. Okay, so this here is fundamentally the basic-ish shape. So I'm wanting to get this shape once again. So I wanna show you one quick thing. So before I go ahead and do how I'm going to be doing it, I wanna show you how we we could have done these fillets a slightly different way, which from what I've gathered, it's by um, basically create your surface and you add those lines right now. So let's just say it was something like this. And then what you would do was extrude from that shape so it already has the bevel in place. But what I'm gonna do now, because we have something that simulates what I'm going for here. Let's go ahead and do a selection. Let's make that a component. Uh, make component, fantastic. I'm gonna now open up the component menu. Let's grab that component. Let's snap it right there for now, yep. I'm then going to move you on the X to there-ish. I don't need my component menu anymore, but I'm now wanting to edit this component. So to edit that component, I'm gonna go into selection. With that selected, I can then go to menu and hit explode, which means it's no longer a component. This is a component that sits like within its own editing sphere, so to speak. So I'm going to grab all these edges here, those edges there, and I'm also just, before we go anywhere else, I get the tape measure, and I'm wanting to give myself a guideline along here that is going to be 80 millimeters. Fantastic. So that's 80 millimeters there. I'm now gonna go ahead and do my move. I'm moving from here to that 80 millimeter snap there, fantastic. So that there is fundamentally my two parts that I need to make this bone stand. Now what I want to do is just do a little cutout here for where the cable is going to slot in. I need to do a little slot to there and a little slot to there. So let's go and do all of that. So. Let's just very quickly, let's just do our freehand. No, let's keep this, keep this precise, Jonathan. So I'm going to go and actually give myself a rectangle then because I know I've got, I think it's 23 or 24 millimeters here. I think it's 24. So I'm just going to go in a little bit from there. I want this to be... 20, let's go 20 by 20. And I screwed that measurement up. So let's use the tools at our disposal here. 20 by, oh, I got it this time. Okay, let's select the face. Selecting that face. Now let's move that face to the center point, which was right about 
here, I think. Is that the center? No, it's not. It's still a little bit further. Up there. There we go. That's the center. So the reason why is I'm going to be using this for our two-point arc. Let's go from there to the middle point of that to then find where it is that I'm wanting here. That's not quite what I'm looking for. No, that is not what you're looking for, Jonathan. What you're looking to do is something much easier, which is one, two, and pull that back. And I'm going to go... Oh, I do want it quite a bit further back than that, though. So let's figure this out. Oh, so there's the segment increase as well. That's interesting. Um, I'm going to go actually with... So, oh yeah, this is 20 by 20, so I can just go to the 10 point, the 10 point, give that there, let's do it again, 10 point, 10 point, put that there, and now what I'm going to do with that in place there, I'm going to do my extrusion down. So that's a nice little cutaway already. Let's remove these extra lines that are no longer needed. So delete those lines. Let's give this just a teeny little bevel as well. So I'm going to, yeah, there to find where that stopping point is. Oh, I keep using the wrong one. I've got to use that two point curve. There to there to there, do the same here. I clicked on the wrong spot there. So there to there. We're going to now push that downwards all the way. There we go. And push you downwards all the way. There we go. Yeah, that. That's going out nicely, very nicely. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do our cutaway to the center of this side. So it's not the center, we're going 27 millimeters inwards from here. So I'm gonna actually, I feel like I need a rectangle because if not, I just don't see where I'm going. So I'm gonna go from this edge Go here, go 27 millimeters. And so there I have a, a guideline that I can work with now. So if I go from there to there, make this three millimeters, and I'm wanting to go to the middle point of our edge, which is that there. Right, where are we going? We're going to that middle point there. That is correct. So with that now in place, I can now go ahead, erase these extra lines. I do like how Gravity Sketch deals with lines here. Um, and now I'm just gonna push this downwards and that's our first cutout Sorted. Brilliant. I'm not going to really fill it that. I was thinking of doing that. But what we do have to do is now select this here, make that a component. So that's now set. Let's do the same here. I have a feeling that the offset here was 23 millimeters. I'm going to say 23 for now. It might, I might be completely wrong here, but that's how the design had, but you know what? I shouldn't do that. Let's go, let's actually rotate this and figure out where we're going. So what I'm wanting to do is rotate on your midpoint, right? Midpoint to there. And now we're gonna rotate you up. Huh. So rotate you, we're gonna go from 90 degrees. There we go, 90 degrees, snap right there. 
And now let's go ahead and move you. So we're going to move from this point here along this edge here. And let me see, where are we going? Somewhere. And let me let me put you to there for now. And we'll move once again. I'm going to lock. Let me scale this up so I can have more room to work with. Let's lock the Y axis so I can move you down to snap here. And the reason why is so that I can now move you along here. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh no, this was 27. So I'm going to go here, type in 27 millimeters to that point there. And now let's just quickly check if that is correct. Because of course, I'm proving that this could all be done within here. So let me just go ahead and do a move. Let's move that copy of it over here and now I'm going to go ahead and rotate this. I don't have an exact rotation that I set when I was designing this in the first place so we'll learn quite a bit of the design from this. Um, so let's go this point there, rotate on the and bring that up. Let me see what's going on here. Yes, that is correct. Okay, brilliant. Well, with that now sorted, let's go and do our last, last cutout on our little shape that we have set here. So we're gonna go ahead now and do our selection. I'm gonna select this object here. I'm now going to go ahead and open the component so that I'm editing it. And now once I'm in here, I think there's also an X-ray option, was there? Um, no, not within, not within this right this minute. Okay, well, we can still work with this. So we're going to use the outline of that shape to go ahead and create a rectangle, which is 30 by 40. Let's go ahead and move. Let's go out of the, so close the component, move you in that direction. Now let's grab this, go back into the component. Let's extrude that downwards. And this here is our slotting phone stand. So let's go ahead and slot this in place now. Uh, make sure we're out of the component, slot you into there, and there we have the phone stand completely designed. So let's just go ahead and rotate this now. So we're going to go with the rotation, do, 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 rotate, and we're going from this point, scale this up, select accurately. So from there, find where it is to here and we're rotating up oh i don't have those both selected so make sure you have them both selected jonathan there we go now they're both selected all right with that selected let's rotate say the mid of that to the bottom of this here And there it is. That's what we're wanting. And here's the phone stand. Look at that. I am so incredibly pleased with VR Sketch. It's passed with flying colors all of my expectations and then some. I am truly amazed. Let's go and give this a nice color because we can and let's 
I fantasized that it was made out of metal. Well, metal doesn't come out too well. Maybe steel. Oh, God, that's not a very nice. Let's just give this a fancy color. <laughs> Colors, let's go for a, a dark blue. There we go. That works for me. And there we have it. So let's bring everything back into the scene. And let's just quickly select our phone here. Let's move our phone stand out from there. Put it on top of our table because we have been able to do all of it. So onto this surface here. Great snapping going on. And let's also just quickly grab our cube as well. So. Here's our cube. And now let's go back to one to one. There it is. And a perfectly created scene, all within Sketch, VR Sketch. I, apart from the price tag, I do not understand why Gravity Sketch, why Google Blocks, why everything doesn't at least have this here. Being able to put in your own dimensions is the game changer that is within VR Sketch. I'm so glad that you've made it to the end of the video. And as you can see, there's some pretty impressive stuff there. This is truly the first time I've ever really had a real feeling for precision modeling in virtual reality. Now, I really do hope that Blender goes and takes a whole bunch of elements of this because the whole VR sketch price tag as well as SketchUp price tag isn't the greatest thing, especially the monthly. I'm not a fan of monthly price tags. So come on, Blender. You see what we're wanting when it comes to precision. Please give us something like that. Next up, a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome. And if you're enjoying the content that I'm making here and you think I'm worthy of your support, I would love to see you there too. We're having a a whole bunch of fun and discussions in the Discord channel, which, by the way, you don't have to be a patron to join. The link is down in the description. Thank you for watching, keep making, and let the quest continue.